and welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori and me, will invite a bookish guest to share their favorite book recommendation. If you share a passion for books and know what's looking for your next read, then join us. Hi, Spencer. Hi, Brie. Hi. So, Brie and Spencer, so let's go Brie first. What have you been up to this summer? I have been kind of losing my mind. The uncertainty how school going to look. And before I knew it, it was August and now it's time for everything to start all over again. So I've just been doing school and reading. I did hit a reading slump for about two weeks. I had never had one before, but I'm out of it now. And I've just been like reading on that galley. (laughs) I've been reading and you know what? I feel like during this time, I've really learned to just read whatever makes you happy because I mean, that's just been getting me through just picking up whatever I'm in the mood for. So that's what I've been doing. (laughs) I love this. And Spencer, what have you been up to? Oh my goodness. So, um, I have been basically playing a lot of Animal Crossing <laughs> uh, and reading, obviously that goes without saying, but like when the pandemic first started, I hit this, um, this wall like mentally and, um, I was in this terrible reading slump and to combat that I bought Animal Crossing, which just happened to come out at the same time. I don't even play video games, but I just needed a form of escape. And so that got me through for the first, I want to say like two months. And I finally got back um, in my reading and have been reading like gangbusters full force. And so, yeah, that's basically it. And I've been trying to exercise. I feel like I should say that for health sake, you know, (laughs) get healthy, blah, blah, blah. But mostly reading and playing video games. <laughs> I love this. So what have you been reading lately? So Brie first and then Spencer. Well, first I just want to say that like, I feel like, like Spencer said, I feel like that was the case for most readers. Like it just got to this point where it like mentally you wanted to read and you just could not. Yeah, totally. It was like, my head was all over the place. So mm-hmm. I feel you. Um, so don't make fun of me, but I've been reading Christmas romances. <laughs> I now. see oh, them. Love this. Love it. I'm surprised because I've been like, I've never, like, this is the year that I actually started to, I don't want to say take that galley serious, but like, it's so out of sight, out of mind. I'm not much of an ebook reader, mm-hmm. but for some reason, this within the last month, I've just been like, let's do this. Like, let's get on there and actually read some stuff. Um, And it is kind of exciting because they're not actually out. So it's like, will the book change any before it gets released? And I I went on there and I requested some stuff, Christmas romances, and I'm like, I'm not going to get approved. And then you look (laughs) up and you're like, oh, snap, I got approved for all five of the ones that I asked for. So I've been really just reading those because I felt like in 2019, a lot of the books that were marketed as Christmas romances didn't feel very Christmas romancy. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to get a jump start this year because you know in September they start releasing back to back. And so far, the ones that I have, it it feels totally different from last year. Like they feel very Christmassy. I think we're gonna have a really good year this year. So that's what I've been reading the past couple of days. <laughs> it's just like net galley Christmas romances. I love this. How about you, Spencer? Um, gosh, I've been reading an eclectic bunch of stuff. So I guess if we're talking series, I actually took part, um, this is probably the only kind of year long book challenge that I have done and kept up with. And that is the in depth readathon where you basically read JD Robbs's in depth series. Mm-hmm. Um, however many you want, there's like 50 of them and <laughs> I am totally new to the series. And so I have started from book one, I'm up to book 10, which is probably not that, uh, not that high, but considering that I've read about six of them in the past two months, I would say is really indicative of how into it I am. And um, I love it. So I guess for people who don't know, it's like this um, futuristic romance set against like a crime fiction backdrop. So you've got like this woman 
detective and her like billionaire husband and each book she's solving different crime cases and obviously we see the romance between her and her husband which I love and so I would say it's probably the best of both worlds for me because I do love thrillers and mysteries and crime fiction but obviously I also really love romance and to have them kind of blended together I'm like so in my element and um, I've actually been reading them or rather listening to them on ebook and when I tell you they are probably some of the best narrated audiobooks that I have listened to I mean it's just such a fantastic production um, that I recommend them to anybody even if you're not into romance or not into crime fiction and they really hold up I feel like I think the book first book came out in the early 90s and so here I am reading them 20 years later and everything still feels fresh and relevant which I guess say, says a lot about um, J.D. Robbs's or Nora, um, Nora's, I guess, writing. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, I've been diving into Word and Rover for me. Like, that's been, like, listening to audiobooks mm-hmm. and just and playing around with the ebooks. And you just, like, that's been, like, a fun series to dive into. And I'm, like, I have, like, I'm on book nine right now. And there's 20 books in a series. But I admire you going for a 50 book series. Like, that's all <laughs> I know. I mean, <laughs> to me, there it's almost like a gift. And there's nothing better than stumbling across a series that I, like, like the first book, only to figure out that there is such a big backlist. It's yeah. such a treat because I'm like, yes, I can binge and just really dive into it. And that's pretty much what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. So that's the purpose of this type of episode. So the purpose of this episode, just for those for the listeners who are listening, is a back of the service episode for Patreon. Our Patreon community, you pay five dollars a month and you get exclusive access to new episodes as well as author interviews. So the goal is for these episodes to chat all things authors, series, and other backlist titles to check out from your library at a lower cost or to your local booksellers. If you're listening to this episode and watch Phoenix podcast. Awesome. If you're interested in more of these episodes, because we have a series episode for Chris and Ashley, we'll have one for Jill Chavez, we'll have one for um, for the Dicta series, just join us for $5 a month and you'll get access to them every Sunday. Um, so now back to regular Perini. So today we're going to be talking about, drum roll, <laughs> Jill Chavez, which as you know, from Lifford Rider, she has written about 100 published works. Um, she has a ton of series to dive into, and she's the perfect candidate to do a backlist dive. So let's talk Jill's, to talk all things Jill. So Spencer, what do you love about Jill's books? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so um, I'm trying not to get giddy because when I say she is my favorite romance author, I'm not even exaggerating. Um, so I guess if I'd have to say like one of the things or the main thing that I love about Jill Shalvis and her work is that I love the blend of comedy and romance that she does. Mm -hmm. Um, She does like witty and snappy dialogue just so well. And the banter between the couples that she features in her books, I think just really shines through. And then in addition to that, you know, her side characters are always just as well-rounded. And, you know, typically they also tend to continue on and become part of her series. But really it's just that blend of comedy and romance. I think that she is just such a top-notch um romantic comedy writer in general so Bree, what do you love about jill chavez i love so really i think this is the year that i started reading her i don't think i read anything by her previous to 2020 and i just i started with the heartbreaker bay series so i've, I've read that and i'm slowly reading the wildstone and i just love how fun they are they still have you know, issues that she discusses in the books, but like the Heartbreaker Bay series, just, I loved that like sense of community. It kind of felt like a small town, but it's set in San Francisco, which to mm-hmm. me feels like a big city. I've never been there, but um, I just love that. I loved the group of friends we were introduced to. I just, totally. it became like a comfort read like yes. for me and I was so when I read wrapped up in you and finished it I was like oh my gosh this is it like there's <laughs> nothing else. you know and I posted that and she sent me a comment on Instagram and I was like oh my gosh she knows who I am and she was like I'm not <laughs> oh that series yet and I was like what? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I just 
I don't know, you, you find those authors that just become like, feel good, you know what you're going to get, like, I yeah. know it's going to be a good time. So mm -hmm. I want to binge her stuff, but then I feel like, okay, I need to space it out because mm -hmm. one day, but you That's know what? exactly what I did. She's doing me about <laughs> few books, like she, she posts like a couple new books every year. Yeah. And, and he has a hundred books. I think you're fine. You can binge on her and you Not the way have more than enough. She'll be done in a week, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> so all right so let's talk about series um so let's talk about heartbreakish series it's set in a it's set in san francisco but it has a small town feel um what exactly can we expect from a heartbreakish series heartbreak of bay series go ahead spence <laughs> <laughs> So, first of all, expect to want to binge through them. Um, so, I guess one of the things, or to me, the main thing that you can expect is strong friendship ties, because I would actually describe Heartbreaker Bay as almost like a romance, um, Melrose Place, if anybody remembers that series, yeah. where it's basically a group of young professionals, and it centers around this apartment complex named Melrose Place, but anyway, um, Heartbreaker Bay, at least the setting of where they are, it takes place around this like allegedly magical fountain. That actually makes it sound like fantasy. It's not, but <laughs> it's like this um, this uh, business slash uh, living complex. And each of the friends just has their own happily ever after. But what you see in the story also, in addition to the romance, is really just friendship. Friendship that actually goes beyond friendship, I would say. And they treat each other like family, which I absolutely adore. So when it comes to the Heartbreaker Bay series, of course, because it's a romance, you're going to get the the coupling. And of course, because it's a Joe Shalvis, you're going to get, you know, that witty repartee, that kind of like verbal sparring. But more so than anything, it's really just the friendship, which I absolutely adore. Um, not even just between the women, which I feel like is, you know, something that is very typical in romance because of its main audience, but also between the men, which is something that I love, you know, none of them are afraid to um, be open with each other and, you know, basically be friends, be bros, and not just kind of stand offish thinking that they can take on the world by themselves or that they are weak for relying on each other um, in their times of need. I love this. So speaking of Jill, what series should we pick up? What other series should we pick up? Like we got Lucky Harbor, we got Animal Magnetism, we got we got Wildstone, we have all we have of them. I know. <laughs> can I do a plug first? Can we do a plug? Spencer did an entire Jill Shalvis video on her YouTube. <laughs> Our friend I Sarah has so one as well. And you know, Sarah loves Harlequin. So she talked about like Harlequin titles, but like anybody mm -hmm. that's listening, Spencer has an entire video. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to put in the show notes. So just click on the blend on the show notes because you'll go into Spencer's video, which is um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I love I mean, that. I, I love it. your like any of your cozy mystery videos. I love. Yeah. That. Oh, yeah. have I, you read Animal Magnetism? I haven't read that one yet, no, but I heard I that a character from Heartbreaker Bay is like in that series. Like that's where he came. Oh my from. goodness! It's been so long since I've read Animal Magnetism. I wouldn't be surprised, and I actually want to go back and reread some of them. I haven't read the whole series, but I mean, Heartbreaker Bay. I, it's to me it's so quintessent it's jill at not even like her peak meaning that whatever she comes out with now is not going to be just as good but it is like quintessential jill shalvis lucky harbor brie i'm so excited for you to read lucky harbor because um that was my first jill shalvis series that i went through and it's very similar to heartbreaker bay in like the friendship and the couplings and it's, I think it's even longer of a series. So I probably recommend for sure Lucky Harbor as one of Jill Shalvis's books if you're like new to her because, oh my God, it's just so good. It, it's just so good. <laughs> I just yeah, so after one of Simply Irresistible, right? And like, she like almost hits the guy on the motorcycle and she yes! Bad. so she gets out and she's so awkward I'm like that yes. is me she's like yeah I'm sorry I didn't kill you and she's yes. like, 
who says that? I'm sorry. Right. I'm exactly. There's so many laugh out loud moments. And like the, the one difference, I guess, between this one and Heartbreaker Bay is that this one is actually set in a small town. Mm-hmm. So you get those authentic small town vibes, which lends to like the nosy neighbors and like those side characters from the small towns who are quirky and kind of like lend some local coloring to the to the series so oh it's a really good series <laughs> so Brie I want to body read it with you so I think we're going to start simply resistible so then we're around the same point okay. so, so, on chapter two. Oh, I need to get it again I have to read it again because I got FOMO <laughs> so when I spoke to Jill about her series I was like so how do you go about this whole series process she said for Lucky Harbor it was done in books of three so there's 12 books, but it didn't mm. become overwhelming because it can be overwhelming for a writer to write, you know, a long series yes. too. So the way the way the publishing world worked was that she just kept getting contracts extending the contract for three books at a time. So the story arcs for Little uh, Harbor are about our three book story arcs. So there's like essentially four trilogies, you know, in a in a series. That totally makes sense because the first three books in the Lucky Harbor series center around three sisters or, you know, each book is about a sister. So that totally makes sense. But I mean, also, I guess I, I feel compelled to mention, which is one of the things that I also love about our series is that you don't have to read them in order. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm type A, so I think it's fun to start from the beginning. But if I come across a book that I am interested in reading of hers, you don't have to start at the beginning the only spoiler if you even call that is is that you um you end up um you end up knowing which couples to get together but i feel like it's a romance that's never like the mystery part (laughs) yeah and with heartbreaker bay like so i i I totally agree i don't think you have to read them in order but there is a point where you kind of shift focus from like the group of friends you meet in the beginning mm-hmm. and now you're meeting more people and I was struggled with that y'all I was like wait a minute <laughs> where's all the people from the beginning <laughs> you know but I'm like well to keep the series going we have to like start mm-hmm. following new people so I was like I I see what you're doing but you get so attached <laughs> oh, um, but yeah I don't think you have to read them in order I totally agree but just keep in mind that like it is going to kind of shift like halfway through the series yeah. So maybe like read the first couple out of order and then maybe, you know, move on to the, the second half. <laughs> I love this. And so for Wild Shan, you can read them out of order because they're essentially standalone um, novels mm-hmm. oh, yeah. um, within just set in the same small town. So I, I started with almost just friends and then I read The Summer Deal and I'm like, girl, at, at some point you got to go back and read book one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read the. I really like the Lemon Sisters. If you haven't read that one, that one is I my favorite it. of the series. It's just the life. What's a sister? It's, I think they're almost like most of them are family related um, books. Um, because there this one's two sisters trading places. Lemon Sisters trading places. Then almost just friends is about a family. The sister and the brother come back to the family, and then the summer deal is about found family and real family. Yeah. Oh gosh, that one was good. That was yeah. good. I, know I haven't good. read that series yet, so I'm excited to dive into it. It's good. I wish it was like interconnected books, <laughs> you know, because I love series, and I'm like, I wish I could be like follow up with the series, like follow up with the mm-hmm. sisters and this other mm-hmm. book, but they're not. They're really like straight up standalone books, so like, you can read them out of order. I think that was her purpose why she wanted to have that series to look like that. So you don't feel intimidated by like there's like twelve books and you're like mm-hmm. I have to start from the beginning like this when you mm-hmm. don't have to. So both almost just friends and the summer deal are like five stars reads of 2020 and y'all know like I'm being real picky with five yes, star. Yes, you are. Here you are. <laughs> Because at the end of the year and previous years, I'm like, dang, what, where are my favorites? Because I just mm-hmm. handed them out. You know, everything got five stars. <laughs> I love it. But like both of those books, oh my gosh, almost just friends, I think about like every day. I can't wait, Spencer. You have to read. Okay, it. I have to start with that one then. And I think just really quickly, I want to say, I think that that is what has kind of kept me from diving into them right away is because they are standalones. And I'm just such a sucker for series because I like to sit with the characters longer. Yeah. So knowing that it's a standalone, I'm like, hmm, okay, maybe I'm just going to hold off. But, you know, yeah. if we're stamping at five stars, then I'm bumping yeah. it to the top of my TBR. 
I love it. Yeah, I would say it's a, it's a five star read. It's so good. And she has a new one coming up in January. Thing that I've noticed about the Wildstone series too, right? So us as romance readers, I think it's safe to say we all three, we like women's fiction too, right? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it feels like when people think of women's fiction, they automatically assume that like the romance is going to take a back seat. And with both the summer deal and almost just friends, I feel like she perfectly balanced both. Like mm. I loved the romances, but I also like the f- main character's journey as like a woman. I felt like that was done perfect as well. So I just, both of them, I was like, how did she balance them b- perfectly? I don't know. Mm-hmm. but. That's, I think that's what's really got me hooked on it is you do get the best of both. Yeah. And wow. the balance is, is done really well. So if you want a romance, you're still going to get that. But, mm-hmm. you know, it is considered more women's fiction. And I thought that was done well, too. Yeah. So let's see. What series are high in theme? So this is probably a Spencer question. And which ones are a bit closed door? Yeah. So, yeah. um... <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm actually going to um, turn to her out, well, I don't know if you're out of print, but as far as the books that are high on steam, I'm actually going to say the Harlequin Blaze series that she wrote back in the day, um, just because Harlequin Blaze is obviously a category imprint that is known for being, um, you know, more sexy and higher in steam and not closed door or anything like that. So um, the particular series names, you've got Flashpoint and Flashback, I think are the two series names. Um, And they're basically just firefighter series. So um, it's a handful of books. Each of them is about an individual firefighter. But because they are blaze, blazes, because they are blazes, you're going to get those like sexy times not turning away from when the couples get together. And as for the closed door ones, oh man, um, I mean, I feel like every <laughs> nothing holds a candle to a blaze. Um, but I would say, I guess her animal magnetism series. I'm gonna take a little bit of an assumption here, and Brie, please correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't read the series. But I assume that her Wildstone series was a little bit lighter, just because yeah. it balanced between romance and women's fiction Mm -hmm. so that would probably be the lower scene because the books kind of in the middle of both the blaze and the wildstone series um that are her kind of regular bread and butter romances those are probably all on the same scheme level just in terms of like you've got your sexy time you've got swearing but then you also have some scenes or some chapters that end in fade to black so it's like a happy medium between uh between the two I love this. Yeah, I would say I would agree. Wildstone is definitely very tame in comparison to her other series that I read for her, um, who are more high in the scene. So there's a little mm-hmm. bit of everything for everyone. All right, so switching gears, what other series should, have you read that we should check out? So this could be Jill, and this could be other authors that you have read a few series, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is like, I, you know, I'm an evangelist. Like, I'm selling you this list that you need to read. <laughs> Well, I want to pick up the animal magnetism next. So I am working on Lucky Harbor. Great Um, choice. Animal magnetism I want to pick up next because I think it's the hero from Wrapped Up in You. I think he comes, is is animal magnetism, it's in like Idaho or or something. Yep, I think something, yeah. He comes from there. So I was like, maybe I should read this one first, but I see more of the Lucky Harbor books in the bookstore. So I was like, we'll just go Mm -hmm. with this one. Um, (laughs) But an author that's not Jill, (laughs) I mean, everybody should read Jill. That one is, I mean, I read... It's almost the fall, so I'm like in a cozy mystery mood. Um, Woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, I really like. Uh, I really, I really want to read Ellie Alexander. Have you read her, Spence? Yes. yes. See, okay. So I don't want to detract from this podcast, so we'll probably have to message after this. But I actually just picked up the second book in her Bake Shop mystery series, which is set in fall. And I think it would, I'm literally holding off reading it until fall because it's going to give all the cozy vibes. 
So um, that's probably what cozy I'm going to pick up next. And I wanted to mention that because I think people don't realize that cozy mysteries pretty much always have a romance going on. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so I guess if I had to talk about, a, so I'm not going to list another Jill Shaw list because that would be way too easy because I love them all. But um, I'm actually going to switch it up a little bit and suggest a paranormal romance, um, which would be the Night Hunter series by Janine Frost. Um, and the reason that I wanted to suggest this one, um, and let me caveat this by saying that I don't typically read paranormal romance. Uh, just because I'm sometimes intimidated by it, just because um, it's part of a long series and sometimes it's hard for me to like get into the concept of otherworldly beings. But that said, this series definitely is like the perfect series, not only if you love paranormal, but if you're new to it like I am. And um, it's actually, I would say if you like Joe Shelvis, this is actually a great series in the paranormal genre because you've got that snappy and witty dialogue that you, you know, no doubt are familiar with from a Joel Shalvis book. You've got that in this series. It's about a half vampire named Cat and a vampire named Bones and the two of them have this hate to love relationship because she starts off by trying to kill him because she's a half freed vampire slayer. And then the two of them go on to basically like, um, fight evil in the world. <laughs> but again, it's the snappy banter between the two of them and their, the development of their relationship as the books go on that really just, I mean, it's like next level. It Obviously, there is like vampires and ghosts and things that aren't part of our regular world. But at its heart, it's such a sweet romance. And the way that he treats her and her, you know, um, self-reliance because she's a super strong heroine. It's got a lot of like Jill Chavez attributes. So yeah, Night Hunter series by Janine Frost. <laughs> I love that. Picking it up because I <laughs> love weird stuff like that. <laughs> oh, you'll love it. And I will say the audiobook also is excellent because the, first of all, the narrator narrates the whole series, which I, you would think would be an obvious, but I've read some, or I've listened to some series that they switch out the narrator and it yeah. bothers me so much, but she does such a great job um, doing each of the characters' voices. It's only one narrator, but Bones has a very distinct accent. I will leave it at that. Um, it, I didn't love it at first, but it quickly grew on me, and the way that she does his voice makes the image of him literally come to life. Like, I, if I could draw, I cannot, but if I could draw, I could draw out exactly what I imagine him to look like strictly because of the way that she does his voice. So that's all I'll say on that because it's really good. Um, and I recommend anybody to listen or read it. Are you still yeah. reading it or did you finish it? So I, there are, I think there are like eight or nine books in the series. And I do this thing. I'm not done with it. I think I only have two books left, but I do this thing where when I realize I'm getting to the end of the series, I'll like pump the brakes and like not read it <laughs> because I don't want it to end, which is so absurd because she even has spin-off series for like the side characters. So it's not like I will totally be out of that world, but I've read about, you know, 80% of them. Um, and I can really vouch for them all. There are some that are my favorite, but this is a series you have to read in order. Um, but it's totally worth it. And it's just, it's just so good. I think there's a new book, book coming out um, for the series. Um, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, actually, I have a couple of friends who are podcasting. Um, the thing over, they're doing a yes. read along for the Night Hunt Press. Yep. <laughs> so I know Francesca they certainly are. and Stephanie and they're like, so I believe there, there's a new book coming out for the series. Oh, great. Yeah, I'm, I'm always messaging Francesca and like, freaking out whenever they're showing what book they're going to talk about next on the podcast. I'm always sending her a message on Instagram like, I remember that one. I love this part. Like, it makes me want to reread the series, but I've got like a whole bunch of other books that I'm trying to get to. So I'm like, okay, just hold off. I know. <laughs> I totally feel you. Like, 
I want to, I just want to love paranormal. Like I want it to be my favorite sub genre, mm -hmm. but it is so intimidating. I think if you yeah. didn't start with it, like mm -hmm. there's authors that I'm interested in and like you see series and you're like, there's 30 books. So I'm reading <laughs> yeah. I'm reading Lucas Hand's 30 book series, the Every New Vampire series. Gosh. I'm on book three. They are delightful. Like they're so <laughs> fun. It's like romantic comedy with vampires. They're like, they're okay. Really see. Yeah. I might need to check that out. And I think that's probably what my hang up is. Uh, because when it comes to paranormal, it seems to me, and again, I know nothing about the genre except for the couple of series that I've uh, read, but it seems to me that a lot of them are serious. Like, obviously, there's romance, but it seems like a lot of them are serious. Yeah. And that's too much for me. I need laugh out loud moments. I need kind of that playful. And that's why I like the Night Hunters one, because it is comedic whereas you've got black dagger brotherhood which is a very famous series which is like serious you know and i'm just like i want to love it and i want to get into it but i'm not laughing yeah. <laughs> so i don't know yeah. i don't know i gotta be in the mood for that gotta get my mind right yeah, <laughs> i'll tell you the lindsay's hand to so quick fight is the first one and the premise is this is a vampire she's afraid of blood and she needs blood to live. So her mom, who's 700 years, 700 years old, kidnaps a therapist to, to, to deal with her phobia. And that's a story. Oh my gosh, that does sound fun. <laughs> it is a fun, it's delightful. You can read them in a day. You can get them from the library. Like they're all enough. Like the third book in the series is the is a vampire who writes romance. Well, paranormal romance. He's like, it's an autobiography. So I love it. Story, <laughs> and his editor is like searching for him and she's like i want you to do book tour and this is this is written in the 90s i think or 2000 so there's no email so these are letters like the editor sends them, <laughs> like you know fedex letters to the person and they're like please send us your email address if you're if you're connected to this and i was like holy shit so it's delightful <laughs> So I would I'll sell that series. It's really fun to read. There's awesome. There's plenty of books to read. So love it. <laughs> awesome. Um, so tell us where you can find you online. So Spencer and then Brie. Okay, so I have a booktube channel, um, and it's called Intentionally Bookish. And I've also got an Instagram of that same handle. So you can find me in either of those places. I put out videos um twice a week normally and then my instagram honestly whenever i'm feeling inspired to post something bookish i love that we have the best thumbnails ever on youtube <laughs> yeah. Ah. yeah they're so cute i just i mean i i really love my friends that are like unapologetically girly so when spencer came on the scene i was like i need to be friends with her like her backgrounds are pink and like stop it. blue yes <laughs> no because honestly and this is just going to be us gushing over each other because and i know we haven't said the name of her um bookstagram handle yet but like i i message her at least like once every couple of days like I want pictures just like yours. She does the best job, like, <laughs> notating her book. And I'm like, I want to do that. Like, re-highlight your books. I need to highlight my books now because, Girl. I mean, you just take your reading experience to the next level. And I'm envious because if you ask me what I read two books ago, I couldn't even tell you the name <laughs> of the characters, let alone the major plot points. So we're... I'll send you more pictures. <laughs> you know, yes. like... Thank you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, Bree, tell us where you can find you online. So I am most active on Instagram. It's falling for romance. I am trying to get my act together and actually pay attention to my blog. I do have a blog, fallingforromance.com. I just, it's like book reviews, but I also want to like incorporate more lifestyle stuff because I'm like, where else do I need to talk about books? Like I post reviews on Goodreads, I post <laughs> reviews on Instagram, like <laughs> it's okay, you know, so I'm most active there. I post something at least once a day, story, feed, something. I love this. Thank you, Spencer and Bree, for being on the show. Thank you. Thank for you for having me. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, or rate and review the show. This is the easiest way to support this podcast. 
want to join a romance loving community, want weekly book recommendations, monthly author Q&As and book recommendation meetups, make new friends, then join our Patreon community. To sign up, please follow the links in the show notes. What to Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts to love on frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.